morning, everybody. A little coffee here. Oh, that's proper. But I uh, wanted to take a few minutes this morning and uh, give y'all a uh, update on my potential or my upcoming trial and my potential um, jail sentence that may follow. So yesterday, as many of you know, I went to uh, Warren County, Ohio, where I have a pending legal matter. I'm currently facing two F3 felonies, one for trafficking of marijuana, one for possession of marijuana with intent to, de to deliver. Um, again, both are F3s. They carry a six month to 36 month prison sentence, as well as a minimum of a $5,000 fine and up to $10,000 fine unless the court deems I'm indigent. But at this time, they're going to find me a minimum of $5,000 per charge, according to state law. Um, so to back it up a little bit, February 9th, 2017 is when I was arrested. I did nearly 50 days in jail, I believe 45, somewhere in that area. Um, at that time, I was bonded out and uh, awaiting trial. Since then, since I was bonded out in March, there has been little to no activity in my case until yesterday during my final pretrial conference. And that's when the state uh, stated that they would drop one F3 if I would plead guilty to the other one. They would then recommend to the judge that I would get a 36 month prison sentence that would be suspended for six more months in county jail but I would get to take off my time so I'd probably do like three or four months in county jail and then three or more years of probation so I uh, refused that deal and here's why um, first of all medical marijuana patient. I hold a valid medical marijuana card. Well, actually it just expired in December, but I held a valid mar medical marijuana card until December 17th of last year. Uh, everything that I was in possession with that day, the 20 pounds of marijuana was my medicine. Um, I was in a relationship at the time. I had intended to have me and that person moved to Colorado and live there. I went there early. Um, that plan of ours to move to Colorado together did not work out. I decided to return to Ohio in order to wait a couple months in order to be able to move to Michigan. Um, the person I was in a relationship with has two young children and their father, uh, got into the, the children's lives. And so we didn't want to move the children to Colorado, which would have been much further from Ohio. And so we decided to move to Michigan, but we needed six months for the kids to finish school. So I was going to stay in Ohio and I never made it home. Uh, I got arrested. So, you know, <laughs> While they say trafficking and stuff, like I had everything I owned in my car. There's no informants. There's no drug bust. This wasn't done at a deal. I didn't sell weed to an undercover cop. It's not my intention. I use weed for medical purposes. And uh, I merely had a six month, um, uh, I had six months worth of my medicine with me. It was just a financial decision. I understand the uh, the legality of it all, but Ohio is also a medical marijuana state. And furthermore, I don't feel that my actions deserve 36 months in prison. When, I, when I'm going to trial, I'm not asking to not be punished. I'm asking not to be punished anymore. I've done nearly 50 days in jail. I've paid thousands of dollars in legal, tens of thousands of dollars in legal fees, lost a year's worth of time, and have basically been on probation for a year. I believe that that's enough for somebody who has a medical marijuana card. Because if I was prescribed Oxycontin 
from a Colorado doctor and I drove to Ohio, it would have been no big deal. But yet with marijuana, this doesn't apply even though the drug is scientifically much safer. So those two things coupled together, my uh, belief that in self-ownership and that those that people should be allowed to choose what they want to put in their body, coupled with the fact that I did jump through these state hoops and try to get, you know, medical marijuana. Again, none of that's here nor there, but the question is, what is the punishment for somebody who possesses an item that hasn't harmed anybody from an individual who hasn't harmed anybody? Should they really be going to a cage that should, or a prison that is intended to be full of violent offenders? To me, the question is no, or the answer is no. And uh, I can't in right mind take any plea deal that w puts myself in the system for longer. The only how I have now is to go to jury trial and uh, beg the jury to hear this. The judge told me yesterday that I have no such defense, that I must only argue the laws. And so I don't know. I mean, the only thing I have to say is the truth. I came to Ohio. Maybe it wasn't the right decision. And I'm, I've always been a person that's been willing to own my mistakes, but I'm not willing to be put in the system for three years and have my life totally held hammed up. It, it just doesn't make any sense. First of all, after I do the jail time and they put me on probation, I return to Colorado where I am, where I live, where I've, I've been taken away from for the last year. Colorado isn't going to, they'll, they'll take me for probation. They'll take the money, but they're not going to fail me for, they're not going to revoke me for failing for marijuana in a legal marijuana state. I don't use other drugs. I don't have another drug problem. I didn't have 10 pounds of crack or heroin or fentanyl or anything in my car. And so, uh, I don't feel I need any sort of monitoring to see that my life is better, that I got off of drugs and da, 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 you know? So it just doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand why probation is even considered. Ideally here, it seems like the real win-win situation would be to simply call this time served. Although my, my attorney who I've made standby counsel now so that I can represent myself at trial tells me it's not possible. But we all know that prosecutors can charge you with anything they want. And so to me, the win-win situation here, where everybody wins, even though I've already lost, so I don't really win, I, I, I guess the other two sides of this win. The state can go do better things. The judge and the prosecutor absolutely have better things. The county that I'm prosecuted in, like most counties near bigger cities, has an opiate problem. Two, uh, the jail system has, and, and probation office has, I'm not, I'm not a concern of theirs. I, I didn't steal from somebody. You don't have to make sure I have a job. You don't have to make sure I'm off of heroin or that I'm not breaking into houses to feed my drug addictions. I don't do any of that stuff. I'm not convicted or accused of any of those things. And, uh, three, the everybody else. And so the win-win situation would be just to let this go. Instead, the state is choosing to waste their time jail resources, probation resources, and other things. And it just doesn't make any sense. It's 2017, people, and the war on drugs is ridiculous. But the war on weed is even worse. Weed has never killed anybody, and I don't know why we're sitting here. I don't know why we're sitting here having this conversation. So, I'm willing to put myself at risk, I guess. I really don't want to go to prison for 36 months. I'm not sure the judge will throw the book at me for going to trial or if they'll give me the same sentence they gave me before. But I can't in my right mind say I need to go to jail for a long time and voluntarily walk myself there. So I'll go to trial and I'm going to beg the jury. I'm going to say, here, I'm a medical marijuana patient. I'm... Uh, you know, allegedly in a medical marijuana state. If this was Oxycontin, we wouldn't even be having this trial. Oxycontin kills people. <laughs> Weed hasn't killed anybody. And I, I really need the jury's help. 
And so on top of that, I'm probably going to need some of y'all's help. You know, uh, Dio Orlecki made a group. Uh, maybe we'll throw a link into this video for you. Um, you know, character letters would be appreciative. Some of y'all have already messaged me words of kindness, just saying, you know, maybe I helped you once and that you appreciate it and you're sorry that I'm going through this stuff. But um, throughout this weekend, we're going to post the uh, the court has, the court's address. And if people feel like sending some letters there uh, early this week, because I'll be sentenced rather quickly, and maybe the judge will take those into consideration as, as into uh, my character. And, um, you know, if anyone feels like, you know, phoning the support, especially if you live in Ohio and or Warren County, anybody that wants to make it to Ohio, that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, I walked into my court date yesterday by myself and I don't mind. And I'm not met a few, several people from here wanted to go and I'm trying to just get this done myself. But uh, it would be nice to have people there for trial. I understand it's middle of nowhere, Ohio. But, um, you know, uh, it would be cool to have some people there. Maybe some sort of little light outreach that's uh, allowed. But other than that, that's where we're at, man. And uh, next week, Thursday, I will uh, go to trial. And uh, we'll see what happens there. So, appreciate you guys listening to me for a little bit, and uh, I'm glad uh, y'all have been here for a couple minutes. I'll read some of the comments below and take some questions. I see, uh, I see, uh, I see one person say, what town in Ohio? It's Lebanon, Ohio. It's in Warren County, L-E-B-A-N-N-O-N. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Some folks are saying good luck. Thank you. I'm going to scroll a little and see if I can see if there's any questions. Shane Jones says, I think it would be best to raise funds to get a competent lawyer to get you out of this. Sucks. Well, that's a great question. First of all, a competent lawyer is a funny question to me. The reason why I made my attorney standby counsel instead of completely firing him. Uh, and, and I'm not even displeased with his actions. He's handicapped by the bar. He's handicapped by the laws that the court makes. And um, therefore, he can't say things that I'm going to be able to say. Yet, uh, I'm appreciative that he is willing to be standby counsel. And so that if the prosecutor is running around with any questions, he can do uh, proper objections. Uh, and that leaves me the best um, advantage to appeal any uh, horrendous outcome. So, um, I don't feel that there is any comp, any lawyer who's worth any amount of money that can go in there and say what I can say. Honestly, I have no legal defense. You know, I have my medicine. I don't mind saying that. And I don't mind if they use this video in my trial. As long as they use the whole thing. And we get to talk about a jury's rights because that's what's going to happen in this court. I got a feeling that when I try to speak my side the judge or state will stop me from saying what I want to say. And I feel that if you are going to be thrown in a cage, you should get to speak whatever you want. It's the freest country in the world, freedom of speech. I mean, I'm not going to be swearing and I'm not going to be rude or offensive. I am going to say what I've said basically, maybe in a little more detail to y'all in this video. You know, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I don't know what we're doing here and we really need the system to work, the system that we purportedly live under is a system of checks and balances. And that checks and balances isn't judicial and, 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 uh, and such. It is also broken down very small and uh, includes a jury. And, you know, I've even told jailers when they check you in, that's supposed to be a system of checks and balances. Jailers shouldn't be arresting people, you know, like I've, I've had in New Hampshire for wearing hats or filming police. You know, the system is supposed to be of checks and balances and works all the time. So if a cop arrests you and brings you to jail and says, hey, it's for wearing a hat in court, the jail should say, no, nah, we don't do that here, man. This is a jail. We actually hold violent offenders here, man. We wearing a hat, peace out. But that's not how the system works. The system has a bunch of people who just follow orders and answer. They take from the right, 
pass it to the left. I'm just doing my job. I'm just doing my job. And that's basically what I'm getting here. Because even the judge yesterday said, your case isn't the normal case due to these things. But since I'm in Ohio, I have to do what Ohio says. Although he clearly misses the, the you know, hypocrisy in his statements. Judy Simmer says, get a haircut, wear a suit, dress the part. Well, I'm definitely not cutting my hair. I've taken too much commitment to growing it out. Um, I did wear a button up into court yesterday and I'll probably wear something else, but I don't want to give a jury or the court any f a false impression. I don't wear suits. I, I don't want them to think I'm, I have more money or less money than I have because you know, I show up in a suit. Do they think I'm trying to hide something? If I show up in really nice clothes, do they think I'm a drug dealer? It, I mean, this is who I am. I wear long shirts, hoodies, and jeans, man. And, uh, that's it. You know, t-shirts and, uh, it is who I am. And so, you know, if a jury wants to convict me because I have long hair and tattoos, then, you know, this, this world's more messed up than I thought. Uh, and so I don't know. Some people said that maybe looking like Jesus will help me, <laughs> you know, I'll take prayers or, or maybe I'll wear a robe into there, whatever it takes, but you'll see. Do you have any idea how Ohio treats people that argue nullification? Well, I won't, I won't argue nullification. I don't, I'm not going to say a jury has a right to do this. I'm just going to say, I know maybe in theory that's jury nullification, man, but my, def I'm going to speak the truth. If, if, if you're not allowed to speak a truth in the courtroom, then I don't know where you are or, or how you are, you know? And so it, it's, it's just unbelievable, you know? So this weekend I'm going to spend some time gathering some information. I have a meeting with my lawyer today at one o'clock where I have to get my entire case file. Um, he, he honestly hasn't been too good about showing me the details of that. And so I, I got to dig into there. I don't think there's any surprises though. The state only has two witnesses, the arresting officer and probably some drug narcotics cop lab technician thing. And, um, so I'm not too concerned with all that, but this weekend I'm going to go over that stuff, you know, and, um, you know, get the address to the courthouse out and uh, the prosecutor. And then, like I said, next Thursday is jury selection and the start of the trial and Friday it is as well, but I think it'll finish in one day. Um, and I hope we can go from there. I, I, I hope some folks are able to make it out here to Ohio. I know, uh, you know, if you message me or contact me, man, I'm willing to help. I, you know, I, I definitely got money for a hotel room for some folks uh, down there and, uh, and some costs but I know it's short notice. I know it's in the middle of nowhere. As Ian Freeman would say, if this were New Hampshire, we'd have 60, 75 people there. And, and I know that's true because it happened in some of my cases before. But, um, you know, I, I know where it is, man. And I know that this case isn't really activism. I mean, it might turn out to be that if they don't let me speak the truth in a courtroom, because that, that should just tell everybody that this whole system's messed up. If you can't, I mean, a person is willing to go in there, admit wrong, and want a reasonable punishment. That's what I'm doing, man. I, I just want a reasonable punishment. And I don't see how adding years under the system is reasonable punishment, especially when, I mean, just think in two years, they make gray hoodies illegal. And I wear gray hoodies. I'm on probation. You know, I've been doing good and everything else and just make something new illegal. And now I'm, I'm back in the system. And, and it, let's say, let's say I, I uh, get the charge of gray hoodie dropped but I'm on probation. So a, a police contact or whatever is a violation. And then they just send me away for 36 months. You know, it's not a good idea. So, you know, a lot of people say to dip and uh, I don't run. I don't run from charges, man. I definitely don't run from charges. You know what? I, I mean, I don't commit murder. So I wouldn't, I mean, I, you know, I'm just saying that I'm not running from a charge that has no violence. I mean, enough's enough. Maybe some people have ran from charges and I don't mind them and I don't judge them, man. But I know other people, you know, I've been reading stories about people who've been getting marijuana cases dropped or, or found not guilty for taking them to trial. So I'm not the first on this path. You know, some, a woman in Colorado just did it with 30 pounds, but I'd like to help beat the path down a little more. I'd like to inspire anybody out there with a, a weed case to take it to trial all the way to trial, every single weed case. I don't care if it's two grams or 20 pounds or 200 pounds, take it to trial. It's ridiculous. And if you're on a jury and it's for weed, man, are we doing something crazy? You know, the government needs to catch up. Jeff Sessions and all these guys are trying to link marijuana to violent crime. Holy crap, marijuana to violent crime? Like, 
you got to be kidding me. And however, I could argue better that government is linked to violent crime. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> bombs over Baghdad, bombs in the Middle East, violent crime galore. But yet here I am. That's the other thing. You know, I want to sit here at sentencing and we're talking about me having 20 pounds of weed in my car for medicine, but the government has trucked billions of tons of cocaine and other things into this country, poisoned alcohol during prohibition, is probably poisoning heroin with fentanyl right now, and here we sit talking about me. <laughs> you know? What are we doing, man? You know? I believe the trial starts at 10 a.m. on Thursday. Sorry, I should have added that. Yeah, 10 a.m. I believe is when the trial starts. It, it might be 8 or 9 even, but uh, it's going to be jury selection to begin with. So, we'll see what happens. But, you know, it's just, it, man, I don't know how I find myself in these situations. I don't know how many of you remember, but I did 90 days in jail for wiretapping, wiretapping, which was filming phone conversations of a bunch of cops, or a cop and two public officials, a principal and her secretary at a school who were covering up a cop assaulting a kid, you know? And then four or five months later after that, it came out by Edward Snowden that the United States government has been wiretapping the world, you know? So, it's insane. You looking for these? So, it's pretty insane. I'm gonna take a few more questions. Wait, selection and trial are on the same day. Yeah, man, this is, uh, well, I mean, I, they have it penned for two days, so they might do selection on day one and then just bounce out, but I doubt it. Uh, I don't think it's gonna take that long. It's been my experience during jury selections that uh, the state really already knows what's going on, and it's really, it's just really, I gotta, I gotta look through the jurors' info and decide who to bounce and who to keep, but. Uh, Matt, they didn't have to ask me if I had a medical marijuana card. It was in my possession when I was arrested. The cops didn't ask me anything once they found out who I was. It says in my paperwork that they asked me if I wanted to cooperate and that I refused to make a statement or something like that. But that ain't even true. They didn't even ask me that. They, I talked more to the cops than they talked to me. So, my car was registered in someone else's name. So, all right, folks. Well, if you ain't got any more questions, I'm going to bounce. I'll uh, see you guys in the group. Feel free to message me. And uh, like I said, hopefully by Monday, uh, we'll have all this going on. And if anyone does want to write a letter and doesn't want to, like, send it or anything like that, you can always uh, send it to us, and we'll print it out and mail it for you. So, um, other than that, man, I uh, appreciate all the love and support. And, uh you know, I really, I really do think I can win this trial. I, I really do believe that in 2017, a jury, uh, a juror, at least one, is, uh, you know, willing to stand their ground on this. I mean, I think that's really all it is. I know there'll be one jury who won't want to lock somebody up for weed, but the question is, will they be pressured enough by the other 11 to hold the position? Um, and, and I hope that's the case, man. So, you know, if you got any uh, friends or connections or, or outreaches in Ohio, let me know or let them know. And uh, I really hope to see you guys on the flip side. So thanks a lot.